All right, so we're going to talk about hitting a little bit. Um, if you have questions as we go, then I'm trying to go through the things that I thought you might think are important. And there's a page in the book that has to do with hitting and what I'm going to talk about. And I'm going to go through a couple things really quickly with you looking at it so we can get to the things that I want to show you today. Um, one of the things I really believe in whatever way you're going to do it as a coach, you, you work to make the people on your team students of the game. Um, I really talk a lot to my players about specific things. Like if I'm going to talk to Lydia Bai on my team, who's an outside hitter, we're going to talk a lot about what makes her a good hitter, what she thinks makes her a good hitter. We talk about the different ways you can be a good hitter. For her, she had no clue when we sat down to talk to her about it, at least that she could verbalize to me. She probably had a picture in her mind, but it wasn't very clear. She knows she's not a power hitter. Um, she is an altitude hitter. Great reach, long arms, contacts the ball really high. For us right now, she's primarily cross-body line outside hitter, really good at it, hard to read, because she's an altitude hitter, and she combines that with being an off-line off hitter, right? And that's how she scored last year, and she's got to add to it. The antenna thing I just showed you is really helping her to become a cross-court location hitter, which she couldn't do before. She liked to bury ball seams like a lot of people do who are talented. And she, that's, I mean, I have one player on my team, that's all she did. She was one of the best players in the country, and she hits hard and low seam, and in college or at another level, it doesn't work. So... This is a list of things I came up with, the kind of hitters you can be. And if you're really going to be good, unless there's something freaky about you, you better be good at more than one way of, of these, whether it's shots, offline, tool, hard. I mean, Cynthia Barbosa, for us, when she came to college, she's with the national team now. She hit the ball so hard, she scared everyone in practice every day. And she got more kills by hitting the ball so hard that the digger couldn't dig it. All right? But the next level not working um, she had to relearn and keep adding to her game so I think talking with your athletes about that's important right I think talking with them about their arm swing for health reasons is really important so we're gonna get into that a little bit so I'm gonna just pick a line here to use and you can put a line out here if I'm an outside hitter then if I start my approach about here, which is what a lot of you, this is where your outside hitters are, somewhere here, and they're approaching into there to hit, we actually put tape on the floor so they can see things that they're doing, all right, so they can understand what they're doing a little bit better. So I'm going to use this as my piece of tape. I think pretty much everybody agrees that when you're teaching someone to hit, that if you teach them to arch their back a lot, that they're going to end up getting hurt. But it is the quickest way to teach someone if they're little and you want to get them to hit topspin, to toss the ball up in the air and hit it and go like that. It's really easy. And that's how a lot of kids start. But in the end, if they want to be very good and not be injured, they shouldn't do that. Because when we ask kids at camp, I ask a lot of health questions. We have 900 kids at camp this summer. And I bet 600 of them have lower back issues. From whatever reason, maybe it's ice hockey. I have no idea. But part of it has to do with volleyball, for sure. So how do you get them to not do this when they hit and to rotate, which is the, the proper way to do it? One is you have them watch other people. Um, we have six different pictures in our office building of Logan Tom hitting, who's one of the best players in the world. And every time one of our athletes walks by and looks at her, it probably helps them because she looks the same way every time she hits. She has an absolutely perfect arm swing in a lot of ways. So how do you get them to open up? Well, if you plant your toes along the line you're going to hit at, which lots of kids do, then it's really hard to open your shoulders far enough to hit. So if you're going to encourage them as an outside hitter, if they approach and plant their feet like this on the line they're going to hit at, they're going to have a hard time rotating their shoulders open. So if you want them to open their shoulders and rotate and hit for power like throwers throw in every sport and there is only one skill that really com that is comparable to spiking in volleyball and that's serving in tennis because it's so vertical I mean if you have a stick figure analysis of it or whatever you want to call it um, they're very similar skills and so we're le learning a lot from tennis well they do a lot of similar things except they have a racket in their hand but if you plant your feet open a little bit 
it's going to help you to get your shoulders open a little bit to hit down this line or to hit on the line that I'm approaching on right here. So if I plan across it a little bit, all right, what that means though is that don't your athletes do everything generically? If they do it, they do it the same way every time. Even if the set is different, they tend to do it the same way every time. Well, you can't do that. If you're going to hit cross court and you plant your feet like this, then you're going to have to hit cross court like this. Very few people plant like this and rotate and hit over here the way, they, the way that we would want them to. So there's a lot to how you plant your feet. So then you take the really conscientious athlete, what do they do? They plant their feet way open so their shoulders are already completely open. Well, you can't jump that way, it's not very good, it's just them exaggerating things. But they have to know and they have to keep track.